Why hello there, Anxious Cynic back again, continuing our beginner's guide series in Minimator. And uh, if you recall the last couple parts, we talked about the camera, but now we're gonna get into making your shot look pretty good, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and talk about lighting. What we wanna do is go ahead and use the shots that we set up in the last uh, couple of tutorials there. I almost said shot for some reason. And we're gonna try to improve the lighting of this scene. So it doesn't really look that bad but i think it could be a little bit better and uh, we'll see if we can achieve that in this tutorial so what i want to do we're going to go ahead and just kind of get our base lighting set up we did this earlier in previous tutorials but maybe we want to make things a little bit better here so we're just going to adjust the fog we're going to adjust the sunlight color i'm going to go to sunlight color there i want to bring this up and kind of give things a bit more of an orange hue maybe kind of bring that in depends on what you want it to look like it doesn't have to be that dramatic I feel like something like that might be okay. We're going to go ahead and change our ambient color here. Uh, sometimes people recommend like kind of a teal color. I'm not really 100% sure. I got to be careful making it too dark. I'm going to go ahead and bring that in just a tad. I feel like that's not too terrible. Just got to make it a pretty subtle effect. We'll try that right there. And we're gonna adjust the fog. So let's go ahead and bring the fog in. Let's bring that distance in just a bit. We can bring the size up a tab. Let's just make the size about 2,500. And then we can bring the distance down. I don't know, we'll try something like that. 2,500 and then maybe tone that back just slightly, 2,300. Something like that. We'll see what it looks like. Notice here that we have our background timeline that we set up before. So you'll notice that these settings are all changing because it's keyframeable at this point. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and delete this keyframe here. So we're going to go down here, click delete. And then that way this keyframe will take over the scene. And, you know, if we wanted it to change over time, we could totally do that. But for now, we want to kind of leave it like this. So there's our base lighting. We can actually even bring our sunlight position up or down however we want to maybe we'll bring it around or something who knows man maybe we'll have it go let's actually with this highlighted here this keyframe highlighted if you recall we're gonna rotate the sun because maybe i want the shadows to kind of be pouring into the window a bit here you can see it right there and maybe we'll get some kind of longer shadows a little something like that so steve's kind of in the shadow there you can see things Kind of working. Shadows look nice and dramatic. Something like that. See, it's kind of hovering a little bit, unfortunately. But anyway, so there's our base lighting. That's what we can do to kind of get just the basic look there. But there's other things that we can do to improve it. So what I'm going to do is create a point light. So we're going to create point light. And I don't remember if I covered this previously. I think I may have mentioned it in the interface tutorial. If I didn't, then I'm sorry. If I did, then sorry for repeating it. But a point light is basically going to shine light in all directions. And then you have the spotlight that will shine light in a singular direction and kind of cast a cone of light depending on the settings that you choose here with the range, the fade size, the spot radius, etc. Uh, so let me go ahead. We're just going to show you a little example of this just in case we haven't already. So here we go. This is our point light. And let me go ahead and take the spotlight. We're gonna make it invisible so we don't have it interrupting the scene. So this is a point light and it's just casting light everywhere. We can increase the range so it goes out further. We can increase the fade size so it doesn't, as you can see here on the rendered image, it uh, doesn't just cast an even light everywhere. It kind of fades off into the distance. And then if we go ahead and untoggle the visibility on this one, make our point light invisible so we're not having it affecting us, then you can see, if you pay attention to the rendered view here, that this light is actually just going to cast in a single direction. So you can see there that it's kind of casting directly towards Steve, something like that. We can increase the range on it. We can increase or decrease the fade size. We can increase the radius so it's more like a wider light. And we can adjust the sharpness here so that determines whether or not the edges of the light are faded like so, or if they're sharp and just a direct line there. So for this instance, I'm gonna use the point lights just because I feel like those would be a little bit easier for the sake of this tutorial. And we're going to get rid of this keyframe because we don't want it to be dark. So we're just gonna try to work on improving a uh, dang old light scene, daylight scene. All right, so here is our spotlight. We got an initial keyframe. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one for now. 
and we've got this light here and it may not really appear to be doing much and notice that we also have this issue where it's casting additional shadows see that over there like it looks like we have two different lights in the scene fortunately in the new version of Minimator, we can go over here to graphics and we have render shadows and i can toggle that off and what that does is allow us to use this light to fill in scenes like for a light <laughs> as you might have imagined and not cast new shadows it will kind of reduce existing shadows as you can see but it will not cast its own shadows this is actually a feature that i complained about not having for some time in monomator and i'm so glad that they finally implemented it because this gives you a whole new revelation of lighting your scenes that you couldn't do before so as you can see here we've got this light on steve and if we turn it off this is our normal light this is how he looked with nothing on if we turn this light on we get some extra brightness we can move it around we can get kind of a, a little bit more of a hero shot on steve we can even change the color we can get some blending of you know different lighting colors in here we can you know keep it yellowish if we want to keep that sunlight kind of vibe going or whatever doesn't really matter uh, so anyway we can have this here get it kind of figured out where we want it to be and just like anything else we can keyframe this light to go the way we want to so if at this point it's about this far from Steve and he's just walking forward then I can go here drag this forward like so and keep that light on Steve however I want to and then maybe at this shot here notice here that the uh, the camera begins to move so uh, uh, that's something that we didn't cover in the previous tutorial we're gonna go ahead and set that to instant so hopefully that doesn't happen there we go doop and uh anyway so uh sorry about that but if you're watching the series then maybe that helps you all right so for this wide shot maybe that uh lighting position doesn't work too well maybe we want to move it we want to have uh something else going on there we can toggle the fade size we'll bring that up and just kind of give a little something else turn that on and off kind of get an idea of what things are looking like here Maybe we want kind of behind Steve to be a little bit more lit up, give a little bit more drama to the situation there. Kind of a less even light, you know, it kind of just makes things look a little bit more alive. So if I toggle that off, let me actually bring this up. So this is our new light. This is the old light. Off, on, off, on. And to me, this kind of gives a little bit of depth to the scene. If you notice here, we have some lighting on this dirt here and it kind of fades off into darkness here so it just gives you some more depth you're kind of looking at things with the more gradients of light and everything and it just brings more life to the scene in my opinion so you can have it like that and then just like with the camera we can set this to an instant keyframe transition so rather than moving as you can see here it's just sliding along then at this one it'll stop right there and that's where we want it and then for this shot we want it to just be somewhere else entirely so we're just going to bring this over something like so we'll have just some stronger light on steve somewhere let's see get it exactly where we want it something like that let's just say that's what we want and then if you notice on this shot you watch the uh, light here boop it just instantly pops over and then it's where we want it to be for that final shot so that's basically how you can light your scene guys uh hopefully this tutorial was helpful it just gives you a little bit more than that default lighting that my animator has with just the sunlight let me go ahead and get that looping a little bit better there all right so as you can see it just gives you a little more options or a lot more options really on how your animation is going to look you don't just have to rely on the sunlight you can do all sorts of things to give your animation that extra polished touch and uh, just get that overall look going there if you had an interior scene you might would want the light to be a little bit darker and oranger or something like that anyway i think you guys get the idea here this is just some basic lighting that can give you a little bit more improved look and give you that extra polish touch one thing we're going to go ahead and brush up on real quick while we're at it is going into the settings here going into the render tab right here and be mindful of your buffer size so as you can see we're getting a 30 frames per second render on the real-time render here which is good so we don't really have to worry about it but for these buffers like for instance the sunlight is really big or very big this is fine at least for me is running perfectly well 
but the point lights will typically cost you some more rendering space or rendering performance. So I have this at very small, but before you render your final animation, you may want to jump these up. Typically, I think big is good enough, maybe very big. You don't really need to go to gigantic in my opinion, but we're gonna bump this up. You may not see a lot of difference here, but in certain scenes where they're more uh, reliant on that spotlight or the point light or whatever, then you'll notice a difference in the quality of the light. So make sure before you render your final animation that if these are very small, to bump them on up to at least big or very big. All right, so that's pretty much it. That's uh, basically how you would light you're seeing guys let's go ahead and have that play and hopefully this tutorial was helpful to you i hope you learned something if you did feel free to hit that like button comment and subscribe to become a citizen today share it with your friends and your family and your pets and let's go ahead and watch this uh without the light so you've seen it a little bit with the point light so let's watch it without it it doesn't look too bad but i mean look at that Look at this, look at this light. Look at that, nothing. Put that on, boom, look how much more vibrant, look how much better that looks. Just from that one point light, that's it. Look at that. Just that extra little oomph to your animation. All right, so thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.